Welcome back to segment number four of my recent visit with Bruce up in Metuchen, New Jersey, of his fish room. In this one, we have what I think was a 29-gallon, or it was a 20-gallon. I forget which right now, but he'll explain that. And again, this struck me as being overcrowded, but hey, it works for him, and I can't complain about somebody's fish being overcrowded, given my own tanks. So come enjoy, especially see how active the fish are when the feeding occurs. Okay, what okay. tell us about the, this tank, Bruce. The 29-gallon tank is the heavy activity tank, and uh, they just have a lot of movement, and they're very heavy eaters. Now, in fact, I'll, I'll put a little food in there just to see, to show you how active they are when it comes feeding time. That, uh, they now, just... unlike your other tanks, this is my kind of tank. There's a lot okay. of fish in there. Okay. And so how do you support that many re reasonable sized fish in a tank that's small for that many fish? I would, I would guess most people would say. Um, I don't know. It just works out fine for me. You, you and me both. We go out and we see something we like and we have to figure exactly what tank right. do they go in, right? Now, I'll put some food in there so you'll see how uh, active they are when it's feeding time. And again, you said, how, what size was this tank? 29 gallon. 29 gallon. Yeah. It's interesting to see the variety of sizes that you have between the 55, 38, 29, and 10. And they all look equally beautiful, each in their own way. Yep. All right, so we're going to put some food in there and Bruce yeah, always... This is uh, plankton. Okay. And you got to be careful. Turn, I'm going to turn the filter off so it doesn't suck any of the food out. And I know you have to be careful because they're going to get you wet, but they're splashing if you're yeah, not careful. Could, yeah, because <laughs> they're always ready to feed. Yeah. Very heavy eaters. Whoa! That's an understatement. Look at those fish go. They're definitely heavy eaters. And they're healthy and fish. And they do sometimes splash water out on, the, uh, out on the floor. I have to mop it up. Recently I was uh, feeding the fish in my bow tank. Right. And one of those Indian algae eaters, which are pretty big now, they're, they're going to be about nine inches long at this point, okay. came right out of the tank. Oh, and wow. I didn't realize, I, I noticed movement, but I didn't know what happened. And after I got through feeding, I looked down and there he was on the floor. Oh, pick them up, throw them back in there. He's fine. Yeah, yeah but oh, yeah. just shot right out of the tank. <laughs> yeah, and they're bigger for eating. Sometimes fish don't do that. Although I haven't had any problem with those guys. Again, in the center of this tank, you have a beautiful low Amazon sword that's got. Well, you got two plants in there, don't you? Yeah, there's two Amazons in there. And each one looks like they've got at least 10, 15, if not more, leaves on them, which makes them yeah. look so gorgeous. But look at your banana plants, the bright green oh, yeah. leaves there. I know. Mine are doing the same thing. You know, I'm used to seeing a banana plant where you see the bananas and, uh, you know, they don't well, have much and leaves. Eventually, this is what happens to them. They, uh, they just become a, a lowly plant. I got one on the right hand side too, but that one doesn't do as well. I guess it just doesn't get enough light. Now, do you think this is a factor of uh, the bulb or the bananas of the plant seem to be in the gravel as opposed to... No, eventually those bananas just disappear and it's just a root oh, okay. System. All right, then that's what's... I've got the same thing and the leaves are just as big as yours right now yeah. in the corner of my corner tank. And then you've got the reddish plants over here to the right. Is that a Ludwigie again? No, that's something else, but I, I don't recall the name. I'm always amazed at these people doing videos and they rattle off the Latin names of these things. Oh, like, I know. But I'm, I'm, I don't try to keep up with them at all. Some, some names stick with me, but a lot don't. Yeah. And like I, the, uh, the Oscar is Astronautus Ocelotus. <laughs> I don't know why I remember that one, but it just stuck in my brain. And now you have some of the spiky plants down in the gravel here. They, they are, that's they, right. A bunch of them. And for some reason, they don't, the spikes don't grow as long. I don't know if the uh, uh, Placostomus keeps them uh, uh, that short or not. And they look like they're a deeper green than the one we were yeah, looking at in the right. 10 gallon. You're right, they do. They're very dense. Uh, I'm looking at yep. the one and then just to the right, I'm trying to think of which one I'm looking at here. 
There yeah, it is. like the, the spike plan in the 10 gallon, you can see is a much lighter green. Yeah, isn't that interesting? I don't interesting? know if it's because of the lighting or, or maybe I'm not sure just exactly. Now did these propagate from the other one or just happened to have bought a couple different ones? No, I've had to, I've transferred them from tank to tank. Okay, so they're the same variety. If you see one you like, I'll send you home with it. Oh, they're doing beautifully here. I I literally don't have any space to put a yeah, plant I, in. Yeah, I Much I'd love to take you up on that. And I, I, as, you I go become, in this. You have to become more ruthless when it comes time to trim. Well, I actually tried to talk my wife into adding another tank. Oh, really? Even though it was only a you know a five gallon split you have, beta you have tank. What, four tanks or three? I have four counting the beta four. tank. And the bettas are doing beautifully. So what size are you uh... I was just trying to get another beta tank for my office oh, on my desk in front of the window. And she says, well, No, see, you've got you, enough and I don't push see, it because she's very you, supportive. You gotta start out with the women. Tell them you want to get a fifty five gallon. And then you can work your way down as a negotiation. Hey, repeat the story that I'm sure we shared once before of how you got your big tank. Yeah, the big tank, well, uh, my daughter in North Carolina had picked up a stray dog. And uh, we were going to give that dog to a neighbor down the street. But the neighbor had two cats. She said, if the dog gets along with my two cats, then I'll keep it. If not, you're going to have to keep it because I can't have a dog in there that, you know, it goes after the cat. And she said one of the cats did get along with the dog, but the other one didn't. So we wound up with the dog. So I told my wife, if, you know, when they were discussing all this, I said, uh, if that's the case, then if we're going to keep the dog, then I get a 55-gallon tank. And that's the 55-gallon tank. That's how I got the 55-gallon tank. <laughs> <laughs> My wife didn't have, have much choice about that because she agreed to that arrangement beforehand. Well, now let's talk about that. That's an interesting subject, Bruce, that both you and I have wonderful spouses yes. who are supportive of our, our yeah. hobbies. Yes. Uh, your wife's name is Lee. Yes. And I told you I, I cannot remember her name. I have to go through, and this is from 50 years ago. I, I think of her name as Penny. I know it's not Penny. Uh, but she's friendly. Oh, it's Lee. And <laughs> still to this day, 50 years later, I have to go through that to catch her name. But anyway, my point being, uh, she's very supportive, obviously, yeah. but she's not involved in your hobby. Am I correct? No. Right. No, she's not. So she, does she come in here and look at these tanks, pay much attention to them or not really? really? But she doesn't spend much time okay. observing them or anything. But she's concerned about what will happen when I die, because I'll probably predecease her, I'm three years older than her, and it's just common that, you know, the women live longer than men anyway. Yeah. She's concerned about what she's going to do with all these fish if I go. Mm -hmm. And I had, I had to fight with her for that uh, new room downstairs. I think she's given in to me because I have the Parkinson's. And I told her, I said, look, I told you a couple of years ago I was going to put that room downstairs. And, uh, you know, I started clearing out for it. And she said, what are you doing? And she, she started to fight with me on it and said, you know, I don't, I don't know what will happen when you, you die. I said, if nothing else, you wind up giving all the fish away. Just find good homes for them. That's all I'm concerned about. Well, that's interesting because in Ray's situation, his wife Joyce yeah. was like your wife, very supportive of his hobby, right? But not engaged in it herself, okay? right? And so it was down in the basement, and if she went down there to see it, it was because she was doing laundry or something, and might have yeah. taken a look. And he had twenty-two tanks down there. Wow! And then he came down very unexpectedly in his mid-seventies with cancer, and got very sick to the point where he could not get up and down the steep steps to take care of those tanks. Okay. Uh, but it was important that the tanks were still there for him. Okay? Okay. I don't know if that was, you know, hey, when I get better, they'll still be there or what. Yeah. But anyway, when he did die, and he did it in a very uh, open fashion in the sense that he knew he was going to die, it wasn't something that he wouldn't talk about, and we had a lifetime friendship. Okay. And I can still remember the day before he died visiting him and having a lovely conversation for a couple of hours talking about our lives together 
and yeah. knowing full well that he was not getting out of that bed anymore. Right. And the next day he did pass away. And so it was sometime after that, and I always wondered, you know, what happens to these 22 tanks that he's got when that day finally comes. Right. And his wife did call and say, would you do me a favor? Would you come and, and take the tanks down for me? And I said, sure, I'd be glad to. And I have to admit that it was, he didn't have a funeral. So there was no chance for his friends to get together and eulogize him or okay. even talk about him. Right? That he, was his wishes? That was his wishes. He did not want anything like that, so he didn't. And I'm telling you, you don't do that for yourself, you do that for the family. The ones that are behind, left behind, a chance to accept and grieve. Yeah. But I did get to have a quiet time with him alone down in his basement after he passed away. I mean, literally taking down 20, 22 tanks, yeah. one at a time, go take all the heaters out, put them in one tank, take all the air stones out, take, you know, I mean, yeah, it was no, quite I a job. I understand, I understand. It's and a, the it's whole a, while... It's a real job. The whole while I was doing it, it I was very close to him. It was, it was my own private funeral service with he and I. She was thrilled to have somebody come do this for her, because she sure. couldn't do it. And I was thrilled, and I must admit, I was looking to see how much I could recover from what he had to yeah. move into my own tanks as a way. And a couple of the fish did come, especially the big pleco. Okay. The big pleco was... I remember you telling me you had a hard, hard time getting out of the I tank. I had no idea how I was going to get him out of that yeah. big tank, because that, that was a tank like yours here, the 55 gallon. Right. And that pleco was... He had a ruler on the side of the tank. And I think we decided he was 36 inches long. Wow. They do get big. Oh, yeah, they do. But he was huge, and I may be over-exaggerating, I usually do that. But nevertheless, how to get him out of the tank was a challenge. And I finally just had to put the bucket into the tank yeah. and chase him into the bucket and pull it out. And boy, did he splash. I was soaked. But I got him. Yeah. And we did get to take him to the Hidden Reef, the fish store. That's right. I and they gave me that. credit for yeah. it, but they found a good home for him. Yeah. Uh, but the tanks had been let fallow for a month or two. Okay. The heater was off in the bigger tanks. So did a lot of fish die in the meantime? The, I, there was no dead fish floating in the tank, okay. but there wasn't many fish left. Right. And well, I was they probably died, and the, the ones that were left probably. fed off the ones that yeah. died. And the same thing with the plants. I mean, he wasn't into plants like you and I are, but he had right. the plants in the tanks. Yeah. And without any light on them for a month, there was little I could salvage. Yeah. Uh, I still have some of his blue gouramis, for example. Okay. He had a lot of fish, but there were not a lot of fish left at that point. Right. So it wasn't as big a problem or opportunity as I originally had hoped. Now, in my case with my wife Pam, right. uh, she got very engaged in the hobby. And at this point, I would say that my 60 years in the hobby, uh, she's learned enough that she could do everything and anything. Okay. So, for example, so if she could take over if you died, for example. I, I I don't know if she would keep them or not, because there is some work associated with it. But she does she does that work, and if well, left, now, wait a minute, you talk about work. It's not work if you enjoy it. Right. Well, a couple things to characterize how engaged she is. One, if it gets to a point where the tank needs to be reworked on, if I don't do it myself, all of a sudden I'll find her out there in a bucket and old clothes okay. and she'll take that tank down to nothing oh, and really? start all over again, clean it all out, change all the water. I mean, she'll do all that. Okay. She's gotten past the point of being afraid of the fish in the tank attacking her hand. Oh, now right. it's funny, all right? But in the first yeah. couple of times, I would hear a shriek from the other room and some fish had come up and you know touched little, her fingers. Yeah. Uh, she would never go in water where there were fish in the water, for example, okay. down a lake or a, a the oh, ocean right. or stuff like that. Okay. But secondly, I am always amazed, and again, our fish tanks are in the living room. So the TV is there, that's our social right. area, sure. uh, and so they're invisible, all, they're visible all the time. Right. And so like today, in the corner tank, I have a school of about 25 neons, and they've been doing real well for a couple months now. Good. And on the way up here, she said, by the way, one of the neons is dead. So, I mean, she pays enough attention that when I point out something in the tank, she's already noticed it. Okay. So, she's paying attention all the time. Oh, that's good. And uh, she can do anything that I can do in those tanks, and she can do it better. If she replants a tank, it looks like one of your tanks. 
I, if me. I replant the tank, I find room for every plant I've gotten at the yeah, forest. No, I know you. You have a much difficulty in disposing of any of your plants. It's, I call it a different style, Bruce. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the fish love it. I mean, yeah. I love the fact that you have a tank where you can't see all the fish. And the more you watch, the more you see them come out under the tank. It's okay. a, like a surprise, okay? okay? And sometimes I have to say to myself, why did you buy that fish? He never comes out, you never see him. Why did you buy him, you know? Yeah. But uh, if you watch long enough, that little white betta will come out of between yeah, one of the Amazons understand. and so yeah. forth. Yeah. But she is that engaged and, okay. uh, it, it, you know, even the tank that's in the office, when I make comment about something going on there, yeah. she's already aware of it. Okay. And so without being obvious, uh, mm -hmm. she's still paying attention to every one of the tanks. She knows what's going on. Okay. And secondly, she's learned over time how to judge the quality of fish. Right. And so it, it's not unusual for her to stop at uh, PetSmart, for example, see something that looks healthy and is a reasonable price, and to buy it. Okay. Now the interesting thing of that is I'm home working on the computer, uh, the emails, and PetSmart sends you the receipt immediately when you oh. check out. Oh, I see. So before she gets home, I've you seen know. that she's you been to the pet store, she's, she's bought some fish, okay. and so when she comes in, she says, I got a surprise for you. <laughs> and I and I got to say, I can't say, I know you got six, six, uh, you know, zeros. Right. I just say, thank you, you dear. Stay as a surprise. Yeah. And no matter what I spend in the store or what I bring home, the worst, uh, the, the strongest rebuff I'll get is, don't you think you have enough fish in that tank already? <laughs> and I know she's right, yeah. but there's never a, you know, hey, we really can't afford more fish, or you yeah, spend how yeah. much? It's one of those things that, hey, you don't go to the football was, games, you don't have season tickets, right. uh, you have this hobby that keeps yeah, you at it's, home it's, it's, that we can share. And, and none of the stuff is that expensive anyway. No, but I gotta tell you, since I've been uh, fertilizing and adding CO2, yeah. Amazon subscription, you know, there's a $50 bill about every month and a half. Okay. All right, those things run almost ten dollars a, a, a bottle and in dosing the three big tanks every day I, I'm surprised how quickly I go through it. Yeah, would, well that's true. But I'm not complaining at all I'm just saying no. that that is an expense that I didn't have before my only expense before was buying a plant or some fish. Yeah. Now I've got a regular fertilizing program that's doing beautifully. Yeah I understand. But still, I gotta, for, the, for I did, the satisfaction you get and everything else, it's a minimal cost. Absolutely. Now, I wanted, before we get finished here, I just wanted to close in on your red kabamba that's doing so beautifully back here. And you've got them as separate stems, yeah. and they just look gorgeous. And as yeah. opposed to, I always have a bunch. I, 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 put, I plant them like I would buy them at the store, which is typically a, a bundle. Yeah, but okay. they look beautiful. I think yeah. I may end up splitting mine out a little bit. But all of your plants have more than adequate lighting because they're so spaced out, yeah. and that makes a big difference too. Oh yeah, it's all LED lighting I've got in the tanks. It's uh, the name of the company I think is Current, and uh, I love their lighting system. That's what I'm going to have on all the tanks downstairs too, and each tank will have its own individual light. Ray used to use the uh, the basement long fluorescent lights. He just hang okay. them over the tanks. Oh know? yeah, yeah. And sure. so he had all his uh, uh, air pumps were just hanging by their their uh, electrical wire from the ceiling. Sure. And so it was not a show area at all, but no. it was fun. And yeah. his video, uh, the first video we did of his room after we did a fishing trip, right. and I just set up the camera and as we were as he was doing things to various tanks, fitting them, putting the new fish yeah. in, planning whatever. We just talked about it. That video has got over 40,000 views now. Holy smokes. I mean, nothing else I've ever put up there goes anywhere near that. But there's like three videos that we did of his basement fish So actually, area. Ray lives on. Ray does live on. And uh, what we didn't realize when we did that, okay, and it wasn't done for this reason, but his wife, who misses him dearly, they were soulmates, uh, Joyce often has said, it is such a great thing. I sit there and watch the YouTube, and I hear his voice, I see his face, I see his fish, and she says, that is such a comfort. Well, and sure. so didn't think yeah. about that. Yeah. So anyway, 
This room, I love it, Bruce, and I know it's a long video, and I don't know if anybody ever watches to the end, but that's their business, not mine. I watch it. When I, when I edit this, I see it again. Okay. When I put it up there, I see it again okay. on the computer, and then I go into the living room, and I put it up on the big TV. Oh, and it's crystal it. clear. It looks beautiful. Yeah. And so I watch it four or five times myself. That's pretty neat. Yeah. At this point, along with the fish videos, of uh, visits with you, with Ray, my own, yeah. etc., and the church videos I do every week. I have over 3,500 videos posted on YouTube. Wow. Now, I don't want to misread, That's they're not all amazing. fish, but yeah. the majority of the views are of the fish rooms. Okay. The church videos, there's like seven a week of the different segments of our yeah. service, and if they get two to five, seven views, that's a lot. Okay. But if you multiply that by the number of weeks in a year, yeah. right, seven times, let's sure. say 52, sure. and add up those views, there's quite a few, but when you come right down to it, the fish, I just recently dedicated a separate channel to the fish. Before oh. they were just my yeah. open channel, yeah. and so most of them were the church ones. You still now, get that guy from Ireland that checks in as well? Every once in a while, if we put something up there, he's the first one to comment. Uh -huh. uh, I think I lost my subscribers uh, that had subscribed to the videos before uh, when I s opened up a separate channel oh, because they're not there yet. Right. And I don't have them on a distribution list. Like you're on a distribution list, so you and a couple other friends get an announcement, hey, there's okay. a new video up there. Yeah. Uh, and so the subscribers haven't moved over. So just right. last night I went back to the original general channel, I'll call it, yeah, okay. and uh, put something on some of those videos to say, by the way, I've opened up a fish channel now. Here's how to get to it. Okay. So we'll see if that makes a difference. But uh, yeah. So I haven't had many comments recently, but it's always been nice. And when Ray passed away, there was a lot of nice uh, net uh, fan comments, if you will, mm -hmm. about loss, often condolences. And I passed that on to his wife, Joyce, yeah. who watched it, and she was just thrilled yeah, sure to hear very, people. Very appreciative of it.